Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are diving into the world of Java collections where we break down all those complex terms like lists, sets, maps and queues into fun and simple concepts anyone can understand. And by the end of this video, you should have your way around Java collections like a pro. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and let's start coding. By the way, do not forget to like and subscribe and also hit the notification button so that you do not miss out on any upcoming videos. Let's get right into it. The first collection type we want to talk about is the list. Okay. What is a list? A list is like you having a line of toys on the floor and you know you can put them in any order you want and say this is for example the first toy or the second toy or the third toy or by definition a list in java pretty much is a collection where elements are stored in a specific order in a list you can have duplicates and you can access them by any position you want to access them this is how to pretty much declare a list all you need to do is just type in the list and the type of list which is a string and in this case we have a list of animals right and then we initialize it as array list. So here, how do you now add to this particular list? This is simple, right? You just need to do the animal dot add, and then you are able to add the string to it. So in this case, we have a dog, we have a cat. And remember I said a list would allow you to add duplicates to it, all right? So now you now have a dog. Now let's print this out and see what we've got, right? So I'm supposed to have it in this order, good. So we have it in the same order, dog, cat, and dog. By definition, if you remember, I said you can access each element by its position. So let's assume that I want to access just the cat. I just want to print out just the cat. How do you do that? So let's just duplicate this. And then in this case, we just need to do animal dot. Now, what position is this? This is position one because we have zero, one, and two. So we have three elements, but always remember it starts with a zero. Okay. So here we just want to get dot get. Now what, what do we want to get the cat, which is on index one. All right. So let's print that. Let's first comment out this and print this. Okay, good. So now we have our cat back. Another type is a set. A set is like a basket of toys, but you can only have one of each. So by definition, a set is a collection that does not allow duplicates, unlike the list that allows duplicate. It simply means that every item in a set is unique and the order to which it comes or goes out is not guaranteed and it is not preserved, unlike the list. So if you want to use a set or you want to write a code using a set, this is how to do it. You declare, of course, your set. In our case, we have a set of fruits. And then we do, we're adding apple. We had another banana and then we had another apple. So by definition, I said it does not allow duplicates, which means it's only going to come back when we print this. It's only going to come back with the unique items. So in this case, we only have the apple and the banana. Okay. So let's run this and see what this comes up with. Okay. Good. It's coming back with apple and banana, which are the unique elements in the set. The next one is a queue. A queue is like a line of kids waiting for candy, for example. The first kid to get in line gets the candy first, then the second and third and so on. A queue um, follows the protocol called the first in first out protocol. Now, by definition, a queue is a collection where the first item added in becomes the first item to be removed. It is useful in situations where you um, you have like task scheduling, for example, where the process or the processing of things should be in order. Let's look at what a, a queue looks like in terms of um, declaration and coding, right? So to declare a queue, you just need to do a queue and then you declare the type of queue, for example. So um, let's let's assume this is a line of um, of kids, for example. So for the line, we have a, a queue of a line and then the first kid is added and the second kid and the third kid. So what we are doing here is now we're saying, OK, we've started to share our candy, for example. So we're doing the poll. So when we do the poll, the first one that comes up should be the first kid. And then 
When we now do the line, because the first kid has already gotten the candy, this should then be how many more kids do we have on the queue or on the line, okay? So let us do that. Let's run this and see what it looks like. All right, so if we look at it, here we have the poll, which means we've started sharing and the first kid has taken. So the first kid is on the line. And then how many more do we have on the, on the line? So here we then have the kid one and kid, I mean, we have the kid three and then the kid two. So in the same order that it's been added. So again, it follows it, the first in and first out protocol. The next one is a map. I want to liken a map to something like a dictionary um, where you go find the meaning of a word. Now a dictionary, what a dictionary does is it holds the key and the value. The key is the word you're looking for and the value is the definition of that word. A map here stores a key value pair. Now each key is unique, like just like the dictionary, right? So if you, for example, you go into a dictionary, you want to look for the, the meaning of a cat, for example. Um, it shows you, when you get there, it shows you the definition of a cat. You cannot have multiple cats in the key, all right? Let's look at what the code looks like, right? So in this case, let's assume we have um, a lot of people who want to store their ages, for example, and their names, all right? So in this case, I have declared a map, and this map is a string and an integer. Now, the string here is the name that I want to store, and the integer here is the age that I want to store. Now, I could change this to anything depending on my case scenario, for example. I could be like, I want to store ID, of integer for example and then integer i could store integer integer it depends on what you're storing right so for this case because i want to store a string and an integer which is the name and the age so i have decided to do a map of a string and an integer right so how do you then add to this i'm doing an ages dot put for right? the first person on my queue is alice for example i'm trying to add alice and the age of alice is 25. the same vein i'm adding bob and the age of bob is 30. Let's just print this out. Let's print uh, the ages out. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Cool. So here we have Bob equals 30 and Alice equals 25. If you notice, the ordering is not guaranteed, right? Because I'm adding Alice first, but now Bob is coming in first, right? Or coming out first. How then can you select or just show, say for example, I want just Bob to be printed or just Alice to be printed, right? So this is how to do it. Here you have Alice. I just want to get by the key. If you remember by definition, right? It's key and value pair and each key is unique, okay? So if I then do Alice, for example, right? I'm doing ages dot get Alice, okay? I just want to print that. And I'm expecting it to come back just with um, the values for Alice. Now let's do that which is 25, right? So there you go. So now we just have the 25 because we're calling by the key itself, okay? Another one is the DQ. A DQ is like a card game where you can take cards from the top or the bottom of the deck at any point in time. So by definition, a DQ, which is double-ended Q, is a collection where you can add or remove items from both ends, front or back, now, it is useful when you need um, flexibility with where items are added or removed. This is what the code looks like. So to declare a DQ, you just, of course, use the DQ and then the array of DQ initialize that. So let's assume that I'm adding a start and the end, for example. Now, if I print this, let's just do this. Let me print this. And then let's see what we have on the queue. Now, on the queue, we have the start and the end. Now, let's now take out the first key, okay? Let's remove the first and then print what we've got again. So let's print this, okay? And then you see that after removing what I, what I have here is line seven, I mean line 14, is printing out what I have in my um, DQ. And then I remove the first one and then it prints out what I have left in the queue because the first one has been removed. Then I only have the end, okay? Now, what if the item I want to remove is the last item, for example, right? In this case, we are removing the first. So all we need to do is just change this remove first to remove last. And then let's run this again. All right. 
See, it has taken out the last item, leaving the first item, which is the start. Another one is the stack. I would like in a stack to, say for example, a stack of pancakes, okay? Where you can only take the pancake at the top. So let's assume we have four pancakes, all right? Pancake one, two, three, and four. Now, if you arrange it in a plate or a bowl, for example, pancake one is at the bottom, and then pancake two is on top of it, and like that, like that. So the topmost pancake would be pancake four, okay? By definition, a stack is a collection where the last item to be added would be the first to be removed. So it goes with the principle of the last in, first out. Now, it is used for things like um, undo operation in software, for example. So if you want to undo the last thing you've done, for example, say, for example, most of us that use a Microsoft Word, so you do a Control Z, for example, right? It undoes what you, what you have there previously. So stack actually follows that particular principle. This is what a stack looks like, okay? Now, we, to declare a stack, you just do a stack and equals new stack, for example. We are adding, for the case of our own pancake, we have pancake one, two, three, and four. So if we printed it out, it's supposed to print out our four pancakes, okay? Let's just print it out first and see what, what we have. Okay, so we have four pancakes, one, two, three, and four, okay? So now we have four, four pancakes. Now let's just do a pop. Now a pop, for example, in in the word of Control Z, for example, is to undo the last thing, right? So let's do a pop and then print out what we have after doing a pop, okay? So let's do that. And then if you follow this, the first line here, line 14, it's printing this, which is all the pancakes we have. Now, as soon as I do a pop, all right, it's printing out what I'm popping, which is pancake four. And then when I print out what, after the pop, after I've done the pop, then I only have pancake one, two, and three, because I've eaten pancake four. I hope that is understood. Another one is the priority queue. Let me liken a priority queue to um, a line in, at the amusement park, for example, where kids with the VIP passes get to go to the ride first, no matter when they arrive, all right? So by definition, a priority queue is a special kind of queue where elements are removed based on their priorities rather than the order they arrived or rather than the order they are, they, they've been added, right? It is useful for situations where, for example, you have certain tasks that are more important than other tasks, okay? So if you need to use the priority queue for example you of course type in the priority queue and it imports the java util priority queue okay and then in our case we have three numbers we have five one and three for example okay so if i do a poll it's simply going to give me what in what priority do you think this is it should be in from the smallest to the greatest right so we should, we should have one three and five so if i do a poll for example then one should come out because one is the smallest in order of priority. And then when I do a print after I've done the poll, because I have already used my one, then I should get a three and five in order of priority. Now note, we can also do this using a, a list. For example, we just need to sort it and sort the list, but this can actually do that job for us. Okay, so let's just see what this brings out. Okay, so as I said earlier, in order of priority, okay? so. We have three and five because we've used our poll here. This is the poll number one. And then we used our one. And then what do we have left? We have the three and five. Okay. Another type is the tree set. Now a tree set is like um, alphabet blocks that you can automatically sort when you put them in a box. Now, by definition, a tree set is a special kind of set that keeps elements in sorted order. It is useful when you need to sort unique items and also keep them sorted. This is what it looks like code-wise, right? So to declare a tree set, for example, um, you just type in the tree set, and of course, again, you import uh, the Java util tree set, okay? And then um, to add an item into the tree set, what you need to do is just do the add. So here we have a sorted set. So we do a sorted set dot add. And then, for example, we add in a banana. Let's assume we have a basket of banana, for example, okay? So we do a sorted set again, dot add, and then we have apple, we just added apple. And then a sorted set, and then we do an orange, we add an orange. So by default, this should come back in alphabetical order, okay? Let's just, let's just print this. 
Okay, so right now you see the first thing I added was the banana, the second one was the apple and the orange. But when we print it, it's coming back automatically sorted. I hope that is understood. In summary, a list is used when you want an ordered collection that allows duplicate. As I said earlier, a list can accept duplicate. Now a set in the, on, on the other hand is used when you want a collection with unique elements with no duplicate. A queue is used when you need to process a FIFO, for example, a first in first out um, application or you want to process things in a first in first out manner. Right? A map is, as I said earlier, is a key and a value pair. Right? A key in the sense that um, you, just like a dictionary, for example, you're going into the dictionary, you're looking for a cat, for example. So a map is used when you need to map a, uh, a key to a value. Okay? A DQ is used when you want to add or remove elements from both ends, maybe at the top or at the bottom, irrespective of where you want to take it from. All right. Now, a stack is used when you need a last in first out LIFO behavior in your application. Now, a priority queue is used when you want to prioritize certain tasks over the others. The tree set, on the other hand, is used when you need a sorted queue or a sorted collection of items. Now it's going to be sorted and it's going to be unique because it's a set as we said earlier. All right. In most cases, when you go for interviews, they would ask you why would you use a map over a list or a set over a list or a set over a map, for example. All right. So these are the reasons why you probably want to use them. This is just um, the difference between all these collections. Okay. So once again, I'm excited to be your instructor for this journey of building excellence. Please subscribe, leave your comment, click the notification button so that you'll be able to see our new videos and most importantly, share with your friends. I'll see you in the next video.